Good morning. My name is Scott Rudd, the Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com. Welcome to today's morning call. It is Wednesday and futures are lower. The one thing I will say this year, which is a little bit different than last year, at least for traders, it seems like you're getting the, the overnight follow through or a, a continuation move to give you that day and a half trade if you do take you know, scenarios overnight. You know, I would say over the course of the last week and a half, most markets that closed real strong opened up strong the next day. Most said that closed weak or near lows opened down. And that's how you know, active traders who look for cash flow typically make their money besides trading intraday. They look for overnight follow through. And yesterday, markets were weak. Oils were weak. We were actually very overbought still. So I think most traders are happy that futures are down 15 handles because they probably went out short like me. If you're on the VTF, you see them short spiders. And you know, I've been talking this morning with many people on there, and they're short multiple things besides just that. So anyway, you, know, you have Europe off uh, broadly lower, about 2.5%. You know, Asia's off small. You know, oil getting another down day after Saudi Arabia came out and said, uh-uh, no cuts. You know, and that was one of the reasons <laughs> that sparked that rally off that February 11th low. So anyway, let's take a look at the charts of the S&P. So, you know, we've been talking about the, the correlation or like looking at the double bottom from, you know, last year that wound up giving you a decent retracement rally all the way up. You know, you had your low, you had your right to reversal double bottom. It cleared the pivot, took back the 8 and 21 day, okay, before taking out resistance and holding it the entire way up. So the question was, what would happen here? So you have a, this double bottom. So let's... Uh, give you a little bit more of a focus here because this is the micro version. This is if you're trading every single day for active cash flow. So here's your micro version where you had your, um, your low from January 20th, 1812, and here we tested it by like a handle or two. Then you had um, a wide range bar, pretty, you know, showing some appetite, a big gap up, another one. Then here you had your first little retest of the 8 and 21 day that was grabbed. And then on Monday, kind of failed right into resistance, right at the 50 day. So now the question is, you know, can we hold this spot? So I'm thinking that perhaps we come in here, I'm short overnight, I will be covering into this spot and see if I see any signals that, you know, maybe we hold in here. Because if we do not hold in here, you know, chances are, you know, we, we, you know we're gonna lose some commitment to this recent rally and everyone's gonna be talking about a move back to lows, et cetera, et cetera. Let me show you one other thing on this, just to you know, have it there for those Fibonacci fans. Okay, if you go from the low here all the way up to where we peaked out on, on Monday, you know, all of a sudden, whoops, sorry, um, you could see you know, the Fibonacci levels of retracements. And what that does is it helps you figure out the speed and composure. Typically, if you were really fast, you hold the 25% retracement from the lows Okay, and then you could even still be deemed strong if you hold the 0.382% retracement. And that means that momentum is fast and you don't have a lot of time. So this would be your zone, 1893 to this 1900 to hold if we were to see shorts remained trapped and buyers not having time and then maybe this gets taken out at some other point. But if you don't hold this, you know, then all of a sudden you gotta start looking lower. Here's your 1877, here's your 1861. By this point, everyone will be really, really bearish, <laughs> losing faith, and then you know, who knows whether it holds or not. So at this point, you know, this is you know, a, a doable spot where you know, it's healthier to see. Okay, and then if you break this, all of a sudden, you know, it, things are gonna take more time and you have to be more careful and you don't have to be on your toes the way you've been during this first part of this move. So there you go there. Okay, so um, basically, you know, Overall, you know, a lot of people have been talking about different types of ways to think. You know, we've been tactical bullish, but intermediate macro bearish. Why are they intermediate macro bearish? Because, you know, you do still have this big <laughs> head and shoulders top formation that held during the first, you know, month of the year. You know, we were down a lot and it's still staring at everybody. So let's take a look at that real quick before we go into, the, you know, the daily cash flow. So you go to, you know, the monthly chart. I'll leave those fibs in there. And if you look at the monthly chart, you know, or, the, or this is actually the weekly chart, you know, you'll see that you know, overall um, we, what we did hold is you know, major support into the 200 day on the weekly, um, bounced around and you still have you know, this head and shoulders top pattern, okay, where most people, 
including me, think there is a chance, you know, you could see a retest of this 1575, you know, or, and first stop, obviously, if it were to break, would be here. So, and again, in the micro spot I showed you before, this is more macro thoughts, where, you know, if oil heads back into the low 20s and, you know, Europe continues to implode and Asia, et cetera, with the values don't want, you know, this, this whole thing could happen still. That's why I'm not saying put in, you know, I haven't, haven't been advocating put long-term money to work. You know, right now we're just trading. So, you know, that's the, the, the longer, you know, term picture versus the daily picture. So yesterday we talked about would we have like a Friday type move where the futures fill a gap, high beta shows some strength, you reverse off of it, very constructive, or would we have a distribution day? Well, it was a distribution day. <laughs> it wasn't constructive. Again, why, you know, hence most people are short overnight. You know, you go to the, the daily chart on the spiders and, you know, let's get a close up here because now I'm just going to stay close, you know, for the rest of today's morning call because we're focusing on cash flow. Okay. Here is, um, you know, here is yesterday's move. We talked about, you know, can we trade into this gap? And a lot of us in the VTF were trying to short at this pivot. Got some good downside follow through, closing the lows. And now here is, you know, an, an important spot for the spiders. I've already covered two thirds of my spiders into this 190.50 area. You know, it, the gap does get filled, okay, here. So I would say if the bulls want to remain in complete control from this tactical move, okay, this spot you know, does hold, I would at least say cover the first time here. I won't be pressing shorts here. I'll be looking to see if there's anything, you know, we're looking to do long. Because again, here, you know, you had your big move. It pulled into the eight day, okay, held, and that gave you more follow through. Here, in the infancy of this, we're already testing the eight and 21 day, which is together, which is, you know, showing you a little weaker than it was then, uh, which it was anyway. So here's where we stalled, first down day. Believe it or not, the oscillators <laughs> went out plus 44. So in this down move, we'll probably be plus 20, not even at neutral yet. So think about that before you just start jumping into things. We're not overbought. I mean, we're not oversold. We're just working off overbought conditions. So let's go through some levels and some sectors real quick. Here's the Q's. You know, Q's already. Um, Q's, by the way, did not make a higher high. Okay, didn't even touch it. So it showed some relative weakness. Um, I would say here is, you know, one spot that could you know, try and hold. And this would be a gap fill. So if you want to make things, you know, correlated, look at Friday's low and look at the gap fill. This to me is, you know, pretty important support. This doesn't hold the close below. And then this is your next spot. So that's the way, you know, I would look at the cues. And if you want to take a bigger picture here, you know, this would be support one, this would be support two, nice short for some people looking for that gap fill, relative weakness didn't even get to the 50 day like the spiders. IWM, um, not really acting that special. It did uh, get above the 8 and 21 day, I would say for today. See if it holds this spot. You know, this is um, your 99-ish area. If it doesn't hold this spot, chances are, you know, it's going to retrace a, a bigger part of this move. And then it could get all the way down to here. So this would be, you know, if you went out short yesterday and you were looking to, you know, cover, this would be a spot to cover and maybe look to see if it, if it holds here. If it doesn't, you know, then could start, you know, raising volatility again. And if you go to the IBBs, the IBBs have actually been, you know, relatively weaker, never even got um, above the 21 day, which rejected it. So if you see a move, you know, it's a probably opening below this, get out of Dodge. This could be the first sector to get back down to these lows. This sector has been very weak, very lethargic on the bounce. And there's been lots of clues to be away from these bios, you know, lots of ascending channels that broke to the downside. This was one with a potency. Here was another one. You know, here was another one. And then this is when it broke major support from last year and never even, you know, reclaimed it. So we'll see if this heads back down to the lows. This sector, if you want to take a snapshot, you know, it doesn't look so hot. <laughs> um, and then you go to the banks. The banks helped fuel the rally from the lows based on JP Morgan doing some huge calculated feasible, feasibility study to buy his stock. Eh. No, he said yesterday he was bored. There wasn't much going on. He wanted to add some excitement in his life. So he bought $25 million worth of stock. So I don't think that was the smartest thing for the guy to say. But anyway, JP Morgan, which, you know, was a little concerning to me, you know, the way it broke, you know, it already broke what, you know, some indices are trying to do today. It broke this spot. So that gave some conviction for a lot of us to go out short overnight too, because that shouldn't have happened. It failed into resistance, broke key support. And now here's your next key level, 
Okay, this is the gap up after that news. So into this spot, if you were short, you know, if, like this, I, we, we talked about in the note, 59 being a spot to sell or maybe fade. You know, so if you, you know, didn't or shorted yes, I would be covering into this. And then maybe if the market wants to hang in there, this could be, you know, a buyable spot. Maybe you get a little red dog reversal, you know, on JP Morgan, which is a 55.96. That was yesterday's low. So I might look to nibble a little bit long into this spot, you know, here just to, you know, see. And, and if the market's going to be any good, <laughs> that spot has to hold. If it starts trading into that gap, the, ba the banks that have been weak probably get weaker and, you know, you better get out of the way, you know, and stay short or just not, <laughs> not look to, to buy. Um, I'm not going to show you the other stocks, you know, the banks. The banks are probably look even worse than, than JP Morgan right now. Then you move to high beta tech. High beta tech, you know, uh, did give you a, a tradable move. Last Wednesday, you had some strength. Thursday, you could have sold it. Friday, you could have bought it. You know, yesterday, Monday, you know, kind of the same thing. And then, you know, yesterday, it was weaker. So if you went out short, you're getting some downside. And now you got to figure out, you know, I would cover if you went out short. But I'm not, again, I don't know if you could be a buyer yet. We have to see. Amazon has been acting best lately. It's still, you know, broken from, you know, this uh, breakout failure up here and then the gap down after earnings. So it's, you know, giving you this nice, ascending channel all of these have this like ascending channel that are only good you know <laughs> until you know they break so at this point you have support one which it's still above pretty you know pretty uh, interesting 541 that's a spot if it breaks 541 you then have a gap fill in the 200 day a little bit closer to um, 535 if it were to break 535 I would take care because that means it's a uh, ascending type bear flag channel could resolve down you know, you saw it here also do the same thing with earnings. So anyway, you know, that's what I would watch. I'd watch if break below this, you better be, you know, very careful trying to, you know, be long this thing. Um, you know, actually, Facebook looks very similar. Facebook, you know, in my recap yesterday, I talked about how, A, you had your, you know, shooting star top, red dog reversal saying get out of Dodge. Here is when it broke below that low, you know, your continuation short. And then since then, you have this bearish type flag ascending channel that you know could be in trouble so with yesterday's down day you know you sell your longs and, and maybe see what's next so now I do think you know you have the 8 and 21 day which it's it got above maybe it holds maybe it doesn't so um, what's a key spot here well it's already below this two-day move and um, I would think you know somewhere around here you know this is Friday's low Friday's low is 102 so anywhere from 102 to 103 this is something I will probably be looking to see if it could be viable here, okay? If, you know, but I, will do, I won't just guess. I'll see if put a low in, maybe futures go lower, it doesn't go down, maybe I buy a little bit for a, a trade to see if it holds in there. But if it doesn't, again, this bearish type flag, you know, could, you know, be game over back to the downside if the market really, you know, loses its bid. So that's what we're going to look to see what happens today. Google hasn't acted special at all. Google couldn't even, you know, get above this recent pivot and, you know, on Monday, people were scratching their head. Why didn't that, you know, why couldn't that happen? And I guess because it's that week. You had your failure here at 800 on earnings, and maybe there's too many trapped longs. So now, if this can't get back above 713-ish, you know, chances are this could be the next stock, you know, to get back down to lows. So you do have micro support here around 702, and then this is, you know, the prior low. But ultimately, rejected here while the, you know, while the spiders were, you know, going up and Amazon was going up and Facebook was going to 108, this thing had no buyers. So now we'll see if, you know, if it comes in or, or not there. Um, you have the metals, who, which have been very erratic and violent, but overall, you know, you had that big panic buy with the GLDs into 120-ish. And then we talked about, you know, would 114-ish hold, and it did. And then it wedged into yesterday's action, and now today it's up. I don't know if it's going to, you know, all of a sudden make new highs right away, but you know, look at this, you know, ever since taking back the eight day here, okay, it's been riding above the eight day and the 21 day. So here's your pivot high, came in real quick. You know, they did fill this gap so it wouldn't be an island top. And then it got a little erratic. And, you know, if you want to draw this wedge here, you know, it seems like if it gets above this um, 118.60-ish, you know, it's, you know, short set of short, it will probably get squeezed and you can get back to the highs here. So don't know if it's enough time, but overall, this, you know, move off the lows has been, you know, pretty, pretty impressive for those who like to be long gold. You go back to, you know, the weekly chart and it's still 
trying to get above, you know, this weekly, you know, this, actually look at the potency of this one, you know, I would say again, yeah, like, you know, you got to hold, you hold this and that's a nice flag and your next spot could be 125. Um, a lot of people who use technicals didn't get caught in this gold mess because they used the 8 and 21 day and, if, and trends. And when this trend broke here, that was your way out. When this trend broke crazy support here, another way out. So now here you are in this descending channel and it's just touching, almost touching this 200 day. So we'll see what happens here. This was a, a pretty potent move above, you know, micro resistance and now it's going to have some pretty macro resistance here. So we shall see. All in all though, gold has been, you know, acting better if you want to take a snapshot of that. And then if you go to the, the daily, um, you will see that, um, look at, you know, it's, it's hanging up there and this time it's hanging up better. So make sure, uh, you know, that continues. Go to the TLTs. Um, that 128 half did hold. Um, you had a little panic buy, you know, in that February 11th low. And then yesterday was like a crazy reversal. It was weaker. People were like, why is, you know, the TLT's weak, market's so weak, et cetera, et cetera. And then boom, it, it rallied. And now it looks like it's clearing this. This 21 day, you know, wound up being big support. We talked about if you sold 135, maybe you buy 128-ish. And now it's looking... Like it, you know, with the market weakness, it can go up. I, I don't know if I would chase the up move today in the TLTs because of the size of the range, but just be careful shorting it. You know, here is um, your resistance at 133, and then the next one up here. So this would be, you know, an inside wedge and resistance, and, and then a higher resistance. So, um, so all in all, okay, you know, a lot of guys out there, DeMarc, this, that, they're saying, you know, we're going to have this fast move back to lows. And who knows, maybe that happens. There was lots of gaps to the upside that fueled this move. There was a lot of short covering. A lot of people missed it. A lot of people were upset. Um, but, you know, you have to probably close below um, this 1895 to 1906 first. Um, do they come in and try and save it a little bit today with the end of the month happening? You know, there was a lot of money put to work, a lot of, you know, things going on. So maybe they do. And then maybe, who knows, they resume in March. Um, so for me, today... I come in short spiders. I talked about it on the recap, and um, I'm going to be covering into this 190.50. I already started doing that, and then I'm going to see if 190-ish holds, and if there's any relative strength in some high beta tech to maybe go from red to green, and maybe you know some of the banks. And if high beta tech is heavy and the banks are heavy and there's no bounce, I'll probably be covered, and I won't be looking long. I'll just get out of the way and you know see what's next, and that's uh, my basic thoughts for today's morning call. It's good to be back. Hopefully, you know, my, my commentary yesterday helped you and uh, I'll see you to recap. Have a good day trading.